everybody, welcome back to some Dwarven Forge painting. Today we're going to learn a few tricks to punch up your pieces. We get a lot of questions about painting LEDs and transparent pieces, but it's really not as scary as it seems. It just takes a little different mindset. So this is a transparent piece that's also designed to be lit from underneath, which is why it's cast in transparent material. And so part of this will be opaque and part of it will remain transparent. So the biggest trick to start with is to mask the areas that you don't want to get paint on. The way I like to think about transparent pieces is to think in reverse and imagine what won't be painted because that's going to be part of the color scheme. The yellow underlit or LED lit elements will be a very bright highlight like yellow. The obvious big factor that will be painted is the rim, so I don't want to be too worried about being precise around the transparent lit section. So what we're going to do is mask it. It's very easy. I like to use white stick or poster stick. It comes in blue, it comes in a lot of different forms, but it's just for hanging art and posters onto walls. You can find it in any pharmacy or hardware store. It's very cheap, very accessible, and very useful. So basically it's anything that is sticky enough where it will stay where you put it, but it's easy to pull off. I've even used Silly Putty for this function as well. So it comes in strips, but you're just going to make it into little globs, stretch it apart so it's a little more flexible. And then you can shape this to the area that you want to mask. So I'm going to just stick it right in the middle of the piece that's going to remain mostly transparent. I have mountains of this stuff at home. You can never have enough. It's super useful. We use it for fixing maybe some stubborn pieces in your build that are tipping over. I use it to place miniatures onto paint handles. It has a lot of uses. Just sticky enough. Push it into the perimeters just to make sure nothing seeps down. And now we don't got to worry about being precise. We can be sloppy as can be and it will stay nice and clean in the center there. So you can see there's a lot of fine detail around the perimeter here. So we want to keep the ruins and symbols transparent. So we're going to do a technique similar to dry brushing, just using some wet paint and the side of the brush to just hit the outsides. We've done this in videos before. It's sort of a medium between dry brushing and layering, just making sure we're getting the upper areas and not getting paint into the recesses. So you got a lot of silly putty at home? <laughs> I do. I have a, like a giant egg thing, like one of those giant red containers. Full I, of it. I didn't know they still made silly putty. I didn't either, until I uh, looked it up for this this purpose. I uh, I knew a kid who ate silly putty when I was uh, when I was like six. <laughs> he uh, he did it on a dare, uh, so that my sister would give him a kiss. I was that kid, but nobody was daring me. It just tasted good. <laughs> it was really salty. Yeah, see, my my grandma would make homemade Play-Doh out of just, like, salt and dough and, like, the thing to make it stick together and stuff. And so I would just lick it and then play with it. Not okay. a great combo, but... But Silly Putty can't be healthy to eat, right? Like, that can't be... That can't be safe. So your friend actually, like, swallowed it? Yeah, he, he downed, like, a... He, like, housed an egg full of Silly Putty. <laughs> That's... Wait, a whole thing? Yeah. Oh my god. So the main difference between LEDs and regular old pieces is when it's going to be lit, it will show all of the gaps in between your layer, which isn't necessarily the case when you're painting over dungeon gray or a black primer or something. So it is useful to have your light ready so that you can put it on top and it will illuminate all of the little gaps that are missing. So it will tell you when you can stop layering. This is especially true when there's kind of a design in the light. So I'll probably do a couple extra layers just to be safe. I will say definitely don't paint it staring down into the light because I've done that and that will screw up your vision for a moment. Um, but just use it as a reference, have it handy to place down so you can illuminate all the little bits and cracks that you can see if you look closely here that you want paint on to cover up the light so that you can read the design that is illuminated. Yeah, uh, and if you don't have your light piece handy, I do this often. I just turn on my cell phone light, put it on my hobby desk, and you can see 
just like that. It's reading pretty well here, actually, so we did nicely on our first layers, but there's a couple little bits where there's some bubbles and whatnot on the upper edges that you can add a little extra paint to. So you can even get in here with a smaller brush and pick specific areas that are not quite opaque. So now you can see this rune section here is a lot more clear. You just want to get the areas separated between the opaque and the illuminated because that's what will make it contrast and make it nice and pretty. So now, of course, we got to unmask the beast. So it's really easy to pull off. If there are little bits on here, the best thing that gets white stick off your pieces is white stick. Just dab it and it will pull it straight off eventually. So now we can avoid some precision areas, but we've been able to just be a little sloppy before we get there. So now you'll just have to be a little more careful painting near the illuminated section. But we saved some headache by saving the precision for later. And so even though this is hellscape, like these things all apply to any transparent piece, right? Oh, absolutely. Uh, I just picked this one because it probably has the smallest details. But anything that's going to be lit, you're using paint to basically draw the design that's going to be lit. And sometimes that's just an entire piece, but a piece like this has detail that you want to differentiate from the actual material that it's on. Like this stone, this, this volcanic rock. So as you can see, it looks pretty well covered without the light, but there's some little spots missing paint. So I think it's worth the effort to go in there and clean that up with a nice thick layer just to hide that so that your pool is very readable and the perimeter of the volcanic rock is as well. So now I'll do some quick work on the part that's going to remain mostly transparent. And again, we want to think in reverse because the lit part is going to be part of the color scheme. And in fact, it'll be the brightest part, of course. So you don't necessarily need to highlight. A lot of my opaque paint that goes on these pieces is mostly uh, the darker areas that let the light shine. So we have these nice ripples in the pool. So we just want it opaque enough and dark enough to make sure that the lit parts uh, make a readable design. And we're not doing anything super fancy here. It's just the same theories of dry brushing and the side of the brush to hit the upper recesses. You just want to be a little extra careful because it is hard to get paint off once it's on the transparent piece. Uh, what you can use is some isopropyl alcohol with a brush or a Q-tip to rub off some areas. I've even scraped it lightly with a hobby knife, like when you're scraping off mold lines on miniatures and that kind of thing. But of course it's best to just prevent that from happening as best you can and do your most careful dry brushing uh, on the design because you can always add more. So be conservative and you can always add more paint on top of it. That happens to me a lot actually. Sometimes I think I'm done and I'll just do one quick dry brush but then as I go I get a little more confident. So you can build your confidence here with a very conservative dry brush and then add more as you continue to test the light and that kind of thing. I'm just testing the dilution of the paint here, making sure most of it really is rubbed off. There's some pieces you can get away with some wet paint on your dry brushing, but here I want it to be a very minimal effect. So that's the key, is just a little more precision on these pieces than your average dungeon gray piece. You're not using a transparent paint here, right? You're using a fully opaque paint? Yeah, well, this is a Picorni's Regal Red, which does lean toward the transparent side of things, but it's not designed to be specifically transparent or for this use. It's just a regular old Picorni acrylic. So again, this looks pretty good, right? You can see the details when it's on here, but the light is shining through. And this isn't far off from how bright the LED is going to be, or at least how much it will affect your paint layer. So you can see, you can kind of see through even that red that we already did. So just let it dry and add a few extra layers until it's as opaque as you like. And that's actually a cool way to get 
different levels of variation with the same color. You just paint a smaller and smaller area so that the light kind of makes some of it thinner and less apparent. And then there's darker sections with no tricks, just where you place the layers. So I'm going to place this one more in the middle and not cover that first one here. So you can kind of even see it unlit here where it's obviously a little thinner on the outside. It gives you a little variation. These are also great for things like your LED torches. We have a lot of them. And you can see this entire flame is completely unpainted. It looks great as it is, and it looks great, of course, when it's lit up. But we can kind of make this a little more flame-like with while preserving the LED effect. So again, you want to think about what is going to be opaque and what's going to remain transparent. So a lot of times for something like this, I will start with the most opaque part. Again, be conservative, just a small area that you can get away with being less precise, less careful. So I'll just do the tips completely opaque and I'm not worried about it covering any light because that's, well, what I want it to do here. So the light will be the brightest part and now you have your darkest part. So you kind of have your whole spectrum here. And now, just to taste, you can go as far as you like. So I'm taking some of my paint, I'm adding a little water to my brush to thin it down, not a lot, just making my brush damp. And I'll do a little glaze here so it will tint the transparent part so that light will shine through a little more red, but it won't be as opaque as the top section. Rinsing my brush, got some uh, black on there for my paper towel, that's fine. Again, water will save you. Just rub it off. But now you can kind of feather up. You can even see my first layer is a little wet. So I can kind of just pull it down with a little moisture to get a glaze. And again, the LED is pretty powerful. So even on this thin layer, it will still shine through when it's lit up. This just gives it a little more dimension. Are there any particular kinds of paints you should be looking for when you're painting an LED piece? Um, I don't think there's necessarily specific paints. I mean, transparent paints can help you, but each new material is a learning curve. So it's really just use the paints you're comfortable diluting because the main thing is the result. So you do want a transparent layers, but if, if, you're, if you're used to glazing with the paints that you have, just use those, especially on these tiny accessories. Here you can see just with one color, I did an opaque part and a slightly more transparent part, just like on this pool. And now your, your highlight, your brightest point, remember, has a light in it, so that's pretty dang bright. So don't worry about doing any highlights, just plug it in here and you'll have the brightest part along with a little opacity to give some contrast on your LED. So I'm not gonna paint the entire piece in this video, but just apply these tips and tricks to any LEDs and any transparent pieces. Use the light test for yourself, which will give you an idea of how the final design is reading and use that as your guide. Just be a little extra careful around the parts that want to be transparent because it's tough to make them, uh, well, it's very easy to make them not transparent anymore with some paint and it's hard to get off. So just be a little more precise, but it's the same techniques as painting on the door overnight. So there's some helpful hints for painting LED and transparent pieces. It's really not so scary. It just takes a little extra precision. And if you have any more questions, feel free to join me on Hamster's Hobby Hang on Twitch at Dwarven Forge Live Thursdays, 6 p.m. Eastern. Join our Discord. Ask our wonderful community that is very eager to answer all your questions as well. And if you paint something you're proud of, take us on social media. Post your photos. And uh, even with your questions, we'll uh, be happy to comment and uh, give you any help you need for painting your new adventure. All right, thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you next time.